Good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha TV this Monday morning. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you. Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has slammed attack on Dalits. He has strongly condemned uh, self-appointed Gorakshaks. Well, this is uh, the top story that we'll be tracking. Also, all the updates from Rio Olympics. Vault specialist Deepa Karmakar has become the first Indian gymnast to qualify for the apparatus finals. All the details to follow. Let us begin with the headlines. GST bill to be tabled in Lok Sabha today. Prime Minister likely to intervene during debate. PM's a strong message calling for protection of Dalits asks people to stop playing politics. Says those who have a problem should attack him. Flood situation grim in Jammu, three people killed and seven injured after house collapses following overnight rainfall. Amarnath and Vaishnu Devi pilgrimages suspended. Big jewel to the Congress-led UDF in Kerala, three decades old partner KM Money quits coalition. Alleges some Congress leaders trying to consciously weaken his party. And Deepa Karmakar scripts history becomes first Indian to make cut for individual world finals in debut Olympic Games. Women's archery team crashes out of tournament. Hockey squad holds Japan to a draw. Top story this morning, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has uh, called for protection of Dalits from cow vigilance. Now, addressing BJP workers in Hyderabad on Sunday, Prime Minister Modi said that he's ready to get shot and attacked in place of Dalits. Stressing that society should not be allowed to be divided on the basis of caste and community, Modi asked people to stop playing politics over Dalits and protect Dalits and other exploited sections of the society. Earlier at Medak, he made a scathing comments about the fake cow protectors, saying that they were dividing the nation and should be isolated and punished. The Prime Minister's comments came at a time when the NDA government is facing flak over incidents of violence against Dalits and Muslims by cow vigilance in states including Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh. <laughs> बाहर करना बंद कर दीजिए बाहर करना है तो मुझ पे कीजिए गोली चलानी है तो मुझ पे चलाइए मेरे दलित भाइयों को मत चलाइए जो लोग इस सामाजिक समस्या का समाधान चाहते हैं उनसे मेरी करवृद्ध प्रार्थना है कि समाज में बिखराव पैदा करने वाली राजनीति का रास्ता छोड़ दे समाज को तोड़ने वाली राजनीति से देश का भला नहीं हो Meanwhile, the opposition has uh, termed the Prime Minister's statement on cow vigilance uh, hypocritical. Now, Congress leader Manish Tiwari questioned uh, Modi's silence on the Dadri lynching incident last year and alleged that the Prime Minister was selective in his outreach. The Janta Dal United said that the Prime Minister's statement has come in very late and if he had given a stern message earlier, the Gaurakshas menace uh, could have been prevented. Open support provided by Mr. Modi and his government that lumpenism in the name of the cow has reached such endemic proportions. Where was the Prime Minister when uh, a clerk was lynched to uh, death in Dadri? Whatever the Prime Minister says today is absolutely humbug and it is completely sanctimonious. A man called Muhammad Akhlaq was lynched in public by a mob of cow vigilantes or gaurakshaks almost a year ago in September 2015. If the Prime Minister had given the same message then, we would have not seen this menace of gaurakshak spreading on a pan-Indian scale. On to some other news now, and the GST bill will be taken up in the Lok Sabha today. The bill virtually has the backing of all political parties. The bill was passed by the lower house last year. The Rajya Sabha has approved amendments which will now need to be cleared by the Lok Sabha. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is likely to intervene during the debate on the bill in the Lok Sabha. 
Now, GST, the biggest economic reform since 1991, will replace a draft of different state and local taxes with a single unified value-added tax system to turn the country into world's biggest single market. The Congress has said that the party will support the bill and has issued a whip to all its MPs to be present in the lower house today. The GST bill has uh, to be ratified by at least 16 uh, states in uh, 30 days after it is passed by Parliament. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that the Indian economy has defied global slowdown and geopolitical tensions and is now poised to seize opportunity to grow faster. Jaitley also credited an aspirational society for forcing politicians to support reforms. He said that the whole world is in a slowdown mode in which if a country is growing by 1.5 to 2 percent, it has a sense of satisfaction that it is not in a negative zone. He added that India has defied that trend. He, however, regretted that while the developed world has been able to control population surge, India has been missing on its population stabilization target. Countries are resorting to desperate measures. Negative interest rates, negligible interest rates, competitive devaluation of economies, uh, of currencies, because they want to grow. Many are in a deacceleration mold, some are in an extremely slowdown mold, job losses are taking place, some other parts of the world are affected by geopolitical factors, the refugees. India, of course, uh, is defying that trend. For the first time in history, we are coming out much better than the rest of the world. Meanwhile, Commerce and Industry Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has asserted that a drop in outbound shipments have bottomed out and exports are likely to see gradual improvement in the near term. Now, India's merchandise exports expanded for the first time in 18 months in June, snapping a downward spiral that lasted one and a half years. Exporters have heaved a sigh of relief as exports have returned to growth after 18 months. Government expects the exports to pick up as it has taken a number of steps like promoting access to new products and finding new geographical areas to boost exports. Well, certainly uh, we had sensed that the uh, fall had been arrested and we were hoping that the rise would uh, be visible. Um, I've been cautious about saying that this rise... Uh, will be slow but steadily it will increase. So we are happy that uh, exporters' efforts are getting rewarded. The government is trying to facilitate. We are extending all kinds of help. Um, we are willing to do more. We want our exporters to feel at ease. The road, however, seems long. Though the positive growth has instilled optimism among exporters, global scenario remained challenged. The European Union is also coping with the after-effects of Brexit and EU is India's largest single export market with a population of nearly half a billion. Last four or five months there has been huge hue and cry because the, due, the prices have moved up after being on a lower side for last seven years. And I think in November to February the imports has gone up by around 300%. So this is a very, very worrying sign and I think the way forward on a sustainable basis would be to look for a modernization of technology in the sectors. India's merchandise exports rose 1.2% year-on-year in June to $22.7 billion, revising a trend that started in December 2014 due to a weak global demand and a fall in commodity prices. The key sectors which are still showing negative growth include pharmaceuticals, some agri-products and textiles. This is Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. News from States Now and Vijay Rupani was uh, sworn in as the new Chief Minister of Gujarat on Sunday, while Nitin Patel took oath as uh, the Deputy Chief Minister. A host of uh, top BJP leaders were present at the swearing-in ceremony. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also extended his uh, best wishes to the new Council of Ministers in his home state. Who, who, Vijay Bhai Ramaniklal Rupani. The new Chief Minister of Gujarat, Vijay Rupani, took oath of office on Sunday along with his deputy Nitin Patel at a grand ceremony in Gandhinagar's Mahatma Mandir. The top leaders of BJP, including veteran L.K. Advani, were present at the oath ceremony. Chief ministers of BJP ruled states of Maharashtra, Jharkhand and Haryana were also present. 
apart from the chief minister and deputy chief minister, seven cabinet rank ministers and 16 ministers of state were also sworn in. Nine ministers from former Chief Minister Anandi Ben Patel's council were dropped. The total size of the Council of Ministers, including the Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister, now stands at 25. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also extended his best wishes to Vijay Rupani and his new team. Vijay Rupani is the 16th Chief Minister of Gujarat. His elevation is being seen as a deft move by the BJP to avoid the impression of favouring any major segment of the society over others. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. News from the state of Kerala. Well, the Congress led UDF has suffered a big blow. Its key partner, Kerala Congress M, led by former Finance Minister KM Money, has snapped ties with it. The decision was taken after a crucial two day meeting of the Kerala Congress M. Party chief Money also launched a scathing attack on the Congress, alleging that some of the party leaders had consciously made efforts to weaken Kerala Congress Money. He, however, added uh, that while it is leaving the UDF, it will provide issue-based uh, support to the Congress-led UPA in Parliament. Manu had also said uh, that uh, his party will uh, neither go to the LDF nor to the BJP NDA camp. Reacting to the development, the Congress called it unfortunate. Kerala Congress Yemine Durbala Padataga in the Guda Lechitore. Party aim, Protegic party, Hilavayim, Kadamakramikin Nadim, Abagir Tipurthan Nadim, Kondasilachela Kendrego, Both of them are not a theater of Mangale, Party Gavarabatore Kano. Party would help my Pimanum, we are the Puritan Mother. Aduana work at Alpidangle, some red chicken mother. Sodondra Vishan of Tore Utterava the Tamil Republic. Proverty can Sahai Kamai, name of the Protek Block, I Irikin Mother Party with the Manitum. This will not affect Congress or Congress led United Front. We will try our best to expand our political base by taking up public issues, the problems of the people. In breakfast news, time to take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome. I'm Amritan Shurai and you're watching Constitutionally Yours. Defense forces, paramilitary forces are at the command of the central government. They wanted to send some help to us. That help could not reach here because the clearance is for the government of India. Two states who accuse citizenship of some other country lose their state subject status. This domicile law rests on the male. It doesn't rest on the birth of from a female. Join us as we try to understand contemporary issues related to the Constitution. Watch Constitutionally Yours on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. Let's get you some uh, weather update. Over 300 people have died so far due to floods that have uh, swept parts of the country. Now, Bihar and Uttarakhand are among the worst affected states. While well, the situation in Assam has started improving. Meanwhile, the Vashno Devi and Amarnath Yatra have been suspended after floods wreaked havoc in Jammu, killing three people. After two years of consecutive droughts, rains this year have presented a different picture altogether. Incessant rainfall triggering floods wreaked havoc in many states, claiming lives of over 300 people, destroying property and standing crops, displacing lakhs of people and washing away houses. In Shimla, many houses, fields and apple orchards have been badly damaged due to cloud burst. A local school in Nanti village was also damaged after waters entered its building. 
हमें यहाँ पर बहुत सारी समस्याओं का सामना करना पड़ रहा है विद्यालय बुरी तरह क्षतिग्रस्त हो चुका है यहाँ बैठने की व्यवस्था नहीं है कमरों में पानी आता है दूसरे कमरे में सलाब आता है पिछले वर्ष भी यहाँ विद्यालय की दीवार ढह गई थी The situation in Bihar still remains grim as 95 people have died in the state. 33 lakh people have been hit by the flood in 14 districts. 6 lakh hectare of land is inundated and 2 lakh hectare of crops has also damaged. However, in Assam the flood situation showed considerable improvement as rains showed some sign of relief. The Brahmaputra and its tributaries are still flowing above the danger mark. Nearly 70,000 people are affected across 84 villages in 8 districts and the death toll stands at 34 in Assam. Flood has wreaked havoc in Jammu following heavy rain killing 3 people. Eight others were also injured in house collapse triggered by overnight rainfall. The Amarnath and Vaishnav Devi pilgrimage have also been suspended. सर हालत बहुत ही खराब हालत है लोगों में बहुत ज्यादा दहशत है जहाँ के मोस्टली लोग इसी पे निर्भर रहे हैं खेती पे निर्भर रहे हैं जहीं से जो आता है और इस वक्त लगभग आधी से ज्यादा जमीन उनकी साथ में बह गई है और जो बचे हुए हैं वो भी इसी दहशत में है कि दरिया का पानी कभी भी आ सकता है मीन वाइल टू मोर बॉडीज है ब्रिटिश एरा ब्रिज कोलेप्स ऑन मुंबई गोवा हाईवे इन रायगढ़ डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र टेकिंग द डेथ टोल टू ट्वेंटी सिक्स ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्य सभा टीवी Meanwhile at least eight people have been killed after a two story building came crashing down in Bhiwandi in Athane district in Maharashtra now this incident comes a week uh, after as many people lost their lives in a similar incidents of uh, house collapse in the uh, town near Mumbai the disease the deceased include an elderly couple who owned the building and uh, six members of a family living on the ground floor The 35-year-old building was declared the most dangerous by the civic body and NDRF team rushed to the spot to pull out bodies of the debris. Now, according to a spokesperson for the civic body, the occupants have been served eviction notices after which two of the around 5 to 6 families had vacated their accommodations. Water connection had been cut and power supply was about to be snapped by the administration as the remaining occupants were not ready to leave. Shifting focus to international news now and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on Sunday told a vast rally in Istanbul that he would approve the return of death penalty if it was backed by parliament and the public. Now Erdogan's remarks are designed to draw a line under the July coup attempt that has since resulted in widespread arrests and a purge of swathes of Turkey's civil service. Religious figures and leaders of two of Turkey's three opposition parties also attended the rally. Erdogan also said that the state would be cleansed of all the supporters of the US-based cleric Fethullah Gulen. The cleric is blamed by the Turkish government for the attempted uprising. He denies any involvement. Now western nations have been critical of the government's response to the coup. The European Union, which Turkey has appealed to join, refuses to accept capital punishment in the member states. Olumsuz kararı verdiler. Aynı demokrasi ama kan dildekilere video konferansta yayın yaptırdılar. And in a boost for the military in Thailand, a clear majority of voters have backed the constitution which has been written by the army appointed committee. Now during a referendum close to 61.45% voted in favor of the new constitution that aims to reduce the power of political parties and extend the influence of the military one of the most controversial clauses calls for 250 seat senate to be fully appointed by the military government thailand's biggest uh, political parties however have rejected the constitution the military in thailand uh, threw out the old constitution when it took power in 2014 after months of political instability and sporadic violence supporters of the new document say that it will restore stability but critics say that it will entrench military control <laughs> เราก็จะดําเนินการคัดค้านร่างนี้ต่อไปในข้อกฎหมายในมาตราที่มันไม่เป็นธรรมเนี่ยเราก็ยังจะคัดค้านยื่นขอการแก้ไขทหารทําปฏิวัติมากี่ครั้งนะเสียของมากี่ครั้งแต่ครั้งนี้ผมอยากให้ทหารทําอย่างสุดลิ่มทิ่มประตูไปเลยให้มันจบไปเลยว่า Let's get you some more international news now in World Rap.
the death toll in Mexico's landslides and flooding has jumped to 38 after tropical storm Earls swept through the country's eastern regions. The state uh, worst hit is uh, Puebla, where 28 people died, at least 15 of them minors, as landslide bu buried uh, several houses. Another 10 people were killed in the state of uh, Veracruz, where rivers uh, swelled with rainwater and dozens of families were evacuated. Scenes of rejoicing were witnessed in the Syrian city of Aleppo as the rebel factions say that they have broken a weeks-long government siege. However, government forces denied that they had been pushed aside. There were sporadic clashes and airstrikes on Sunday morning after the reported ending of the siege. Government forces cut Aleppo's rebel-held areas off in the month of July, with some 2,50,000 people living under siege. Hillary Clinton, the U.S. Democratic presidential nominee, is leading her Republican rival Donald Trump by eight points, a latest opinion poll said on Sunday. In a latest poll, the Washington Post ABC News said that Clinton and her running mate Tim Kaine are now leading Trump and his running mate Mike Pence by 50 to 42 percent among registered voters. And this is double the lead that Clinton had over Trump on the eve of the Republican National Convention in Cleveland last month. Several people are feared dead in clashes in northwestern Ethiopia between police and the anti-government protesters amid a wave of unrest. Authorities have banned demonstrations and blocked social media. Despite the ban, people took to the streets in several parts of the country for a third consecutive day on Sunday. The government has been facing protests from the two largest ethnic communities over alleged human rights abuses and other issues. Now onto some news from Rio Olympics and India's quest for a medal in Rio 2016 is still on as it has not bagged a single medal in the competitions on second day as well. In some good news, however, gymnast Deepa Karmakar scripted history as she became the first Indian to make the cut for the individual world finals in her debut Olympic Games after finishing eighth in the qualifying round. Now, Deepa managed to perform her much-appreciated uh, Produnova vault cleanly to secure 14.85 uh, points after two attempts. Earlier, Karmakar finished her fourth event in artistic gymnastics with the 12.033 in flow exercise. The vault final will take place on 14th of August. Yet. She needs to do that. She goes. Meanwhile, India's uh, hockey, women's hockey team showed a tremendous fighting spirit and came from two goals down uh, to ache a two-all draw against Japan in their opening Pool B match on Sunday. India were trailing by two goals at halftime. After world number 10, uh, Japan uh, scored through Emi Nishikori and Mi Nakashima, but the Indians made a valiant fight back as Rani Rampal and Lilima Mins scored in the third quarter to secure points for their side. The shot comes and scores. The penalty corner pays for India. And the Indian women's recurve archery team was knocked out of the 2016 Rio Games after going down 4-5 to Russia in the quarterfinals. The quarterfinal tie was evenly poised after the four sets at 4-all. In the shootout, however, India lost 23-25 that ended their Rio campaign. Earlier, India edged out Colombia 5-3 to progress to the quarters. Taking a long time and eight. So... Russia have a one point also Indian shooters unimpressive run continued unabated with the Hina Sindhu crashing out of the women's 10 meters air pistol qualification round by finishing way behind the leaders in the 14th position out of 44 competitors Hina will now try to make amends when she competes in the, the 25 meters pistol event scheduled to be held on 9th of August Let's take a look at some more events that made headlines at the Rio Games. 
Now, Serena and Venus Williams are lost for the first time in an Olympics doubles match as uh, their hope of winning a fourth successive title was uh, surprisingly ended in the first round itself at the Rio Games. The American top seeds uh, lost 6-3, uh, 6-4 to Czech Republic's uh, Lucy Safarova and Barbora Strykova, who were the only pair together at a late notice. Meanwhile, Sarah Storjom broke her own world record in the 100 meters butterfly on Sunday to become the first Swedish woman to win an Olympic gold medal for swimming. Storjom set a time of 55.48 seconds to break her previous mark of 55.64 seconds set in Russia a year ago. She will now race in the 50, 100 and 200 meters freestyle event as well. And Britain's Lizzie Armistead missed out on an Olympic medal in the women's uh, road race uh, marred by a horrific crash. The world champion finished a fifth. Teammate Anna van der Breggen won a gold. And in the overall uh, medal standings on day two, India has yet to make a cut since they have not won a single medal in any event so far. While South Korea stood at the fourth spot in the medals tally with the two gold, two silvers and a bronze. In Italy, it takes the third spot with the seven medals that includes the two gold, three silver and two bronze. Australia has bagged three golds and are placed second. While London Olympics runners-up China top the table with eight medals that includes the three gold, two silver and three bronze medals. That's all in this edition of news. Thanks so much for watching.